Hi, I'm Ivy Marie Lim, Peak Performance and Relationship Coach. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about using feng shui for mental wellness. And by mental wellness, I mean from anything, whether you're feeling stuck, worried, uncertain, feeling sad or anxious, any of those feelings that are the opposite of elation and joy. And if you're anything like me these days, pandemic life has been such a roller coaster of emotions and uncertainty. Welcome, I'm Ivy Marie Lim, peak performance and relationship coach, trainer, speaker, and mom. And I help women be their best self, attract the love they deserve and the life they want. So the first thing is, and it is by far the golden rule of feng shui, and that is to declutter. Now I know that if you're feeling in a funk, the last thing you want to do is to clean up and declutter. So the best thing here to do is to start small. Start with a drawer, a countertop, your desktop, your bathroom countertop. And another key thing here is to do this without any self-judgment or self-criticism. Yes, maybe you've accumulated too much stuff. Maybe you spent money on things that you've regretted. Forget all the judgment around your clutter and your mess. Put on some music and just start decluttering. And don't forget this next important step. That is to allow yourself to enjoy the clear and clean space for a moment. The more you celebrate the small things, the more easily you allow abundance to flow into your life. Number two is nature. A lot of people forget that Feng Shui's true essence is to bring us back into harmony with nature and to honor all of the cycles of life from creation to destruction to creation again. So get outside every day and the morning sunlight is the best. Getting safe sunlight in your eyes and forward walking movement is also best. Try to get a panoramic view of your surroundings. I love watching neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman, his studies on what a game changer it is doing this to enhance your mental wellness. Number three is your bedroom. There's so much scientific studies now out there that talk about how important sleep is. And the bedroom is a place where you get your rest and rejuvenation. And so it's absolutely a key to your mental wellness. Some key feng shui tips here again is having a clear decluttered space and color is also important here. I never realized how important it was until I personally experimented with it myself. How important the color in my bedroom really mattered to me. I went from a neutral dark beige, which I thought was neutral enough to a light mauve purple and right away I felt the difference in my sleep. So having a nice clear space and the right color scheme could really enhance the feng shui in your bedroom if you're having trouble sleeping. Number four is plants. Bring in vibrant plants to the spaces where you spend the most time in. I love peace lilies because they're low maintenance and they always let you know when they need watering. And only have as much plants that you know you can take care of. And in feng shui, it's preferred that you avoid spiky plants. And of course, plants need plenty of sunlight. So this ties in with number five, opening the curtains to morning sunshine and saying an affirmation of gratitude. And then when you close them at night, again, say an affirmation of thanks. Make this a daily ritual and see how your energy shifts. Number five is music. Music is a universal remedy. It creates energetic vibrations and movement throughout your home, really lifting any stagnant or low lying energy. So play music often, play your instruments often if you have them and choose uplifting and inspiring music. So I hope you find these helpful. Feel free to contact me for life coaching with Feng Shui and also see the links below for my free Feng Shui Bagua map. And don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if I can help you in any way. Thank you. Thanks for watching and bye for now.